Welcome to Hofstra Today. We sat down with the director of Cymbeline to discuss this semester's production. Two professors go head to head in a game of trivia. And we're getting into this spooky spirit with Halloween right around the corner. All that and more happening at and around Hofstra Today. Welcome to Hofstra Today. I'm Max Coven. And I'm Amelia Sack. Max, this candy on the desk looks so good. I just want to take a bite. It looks divine. You know what? My favorite candy will always be a peanut butter Twix. I do not know why, but what is yours, Amelia? I feel like that's very niche. My favorite candy, if we're going with chocolate, I would have to say peanut butter M&Ms. But if we're going with like sour gummy candy, definitely Sour Patch Kids or Sour Patch Kids watermelons. You know, the big talk was the fudge brownie M&Ms. One of our executive producers was really obsessed with that and really devoted to, you know, that being the number one M&M. Yeah, and then another one of our producers, Tyler, mentioned he liked coconut M&Ms, but that didn't get the same response. No, but I'll definitely give it a shot next time I see it on the show. Yeah, I might have to try it, Tyler. For sure. Let's get started with today's headlines at and around Hofstra. Hofstra's student government senate once again met on October 20th in the student center greenhouse after the fall break. During the meeting, the senate newly recognized two clubs, the American Medical Women's Association, or AMWA, and Hofstra Roller Hockey. Additionally, SGA announced that the Pride Den will be closing at 2 a.m. with time allotted for quiet study hours. Join Calico Senior Presidential Fe Fellows Ari Flesher, a former White House Press Secretary, and Phil Shaliro, a political strategist and former Director of Legislative Affairs, as they discuss the midterm elections. They will also discuss what it means for the Biden presidency. The event will take place on Thursday, November 10th at 1 p.m. in the Guthard Cultural Center Theater. People can join the conversation on social media with the hashtag HofstraVotes and hashtag CalicoPanel. The event is free and open to the public, but advanced registration is required on the Hofstra events calendar. The music department is presenting the Dorothy Hogue Honors Recital on Saturday, November 5th. Dorothy Hogue is a Hofstra University benefactor, and she supported several special projects to ensure a continued quality to music performance and rehearsal for future generations of students. Additionally, she established a scholarship in her name, which benefits students pursuing the music field. The event is free and open to the public. No prior registration is required. Capture the Flag Cybersecurity Competition Qualifying Round is on October 28th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. The event is an entry-level Jeopardy-style competition featuring teams of two to three Hofstra students with at least one student from the Zarb School of Business. The event will take place in the Cybersecurity Center in CB Star Room 108. Scholarships awards are up to $3,000 and will be awarded to the top three teams. The competition is sponsored by the Scheiper Family Foundation. The Drama and Dance Department will be presenting A Giddy Thing, a one-hour Much Ado About Nothing, for their 74th Annual Shakespeare Festival. The play was written by William Shakespeare, adapted by Autumn Weary, and directed by Jennifer Hart. Performances will be on Thursday, November 3rd at 8 p.m. and Saturday, November 5th at 2 p.m. in the Joan and Donald Schaefer Black Box Theater in Joseph G. Shapiro Family Hall. Also on November 5th, there will be a special performance with the Collegium Museum. The events are free to Hofstra and non-Hofstra members. The Hofstra Cultural Center and Italian American Experience Lecture Series are collaborating with the Smooth Grove Productions to present Vince Tempera de Fellini a Tarantino concert on Monday, November 14th at the Helene Fortunoff Theater. Sergio Bellotti will be on the drums and Enrico Santarelli will be on the bass. For more information, visit hofstra.edu culture or call the Hofstra Cultural Center. 
Come out to the anthropologist production of No Pants in Tucson, a live comedy show about gender impression on Thursday, November 10th at the Helene Fortunoff Theater in the Monroe Lecture Center. The play takes place in 1883 when a law is passed forbidding women of Tucson from wearing pants. This event is free for all students. Advanced registration is required on the Hofstra events calendar. Boo! Halloween is just five days away. Here's how Hofstra is celebrating. On Friday night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., join the Caribbean Student Association for Haunted, the ultimate Halloween fete. This fun party will be hosted at Haunted Hofstra USA and is available for all Hofstra students. Admission is $10 at the door. On Saturday night, come to the Student Center Theater for a Halloween movie night. A screening of An American Werewolf in London will begin at 7.30. The Residence Hall Association and over a dozen Hofstra clubs will be hosting a Halloween carnival on Sunday. There will be live performances, various activities, a costume contest, and of course, who doesn't love free food? You won't want to miss out on this fun event. And to wrap up this exciting weekend of spooky activities, the Department of Intercultural Engagement and Inclusion and the Office of Student Leadership is hosting a Dia La Muertos celebration on Halloween from 1 to 2.15 p.m. This event will take place in the Student Center and will include free food offerings and crafts. All of us here at Hofstra today wish you a very happy and a very safe Halloween. After a short break, we'll hear some national news from our anchor, Alexa McNulty. Don't go anywhere. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Okay, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Now let's hear our national news update from Alexa McNulty. Two people were, ki were killed and seven injured in a shooting at a St. Louis high school on Monday morning. Police stated that 19-year-old former student Orlando Harris killed both a teacher and a 15-year-old student at the Central Visual and Performing Arts High School. According to authorities, the shooting erupted shortly after 9 a.m., less than two hours after classes had began. The gunman was taken into custody and later pronounced dead. Adidas terminated their eight-year relationship with Kanye West following a series of anti-Semitic remarks. Earlier this week, Kanye bragged on a podcast about being able to make discriminatory statements without it affecting his business partnerships. Anti-Semitic demonstrators cited their support of Kanye West following his comments. Adidas released a statement yesterday condemning, quote, anti-Semitism and any other sort of hate speech. This decision, which ends production of Yeezy branded products and stops all pro payments made to Yee and his company, went into immediate effect yesterday. Both Balenciaga and the talent agency CAA have recently severed ties with Kanye. Multiple chain retail stores, including The Gap, will also be pulling Yeezy products from their shelves. A 5.1 magnitude earthquake struck the San Francisco Bay Area Tuesday morning. The California Governor's Emergency Services Office is actively coordinating with authorities in the region to evaluate any preliminary damage or issues resulting from the earthquake. Santa Clara County authorities have stated that no schools were damaged and classes have resumed. Officials have stated that this was the Bay Area's largest earthquake since the 6.0 magnitude Napa quake in 2014. That's all for your national news. Now back to you, Amelia and Max. Thank you, Alexa. Our field reporter, Clara Pedro, visited the Career Center to learn more about our permanent career closet here on campus. Let's take a look at how she spiced up her closet this fall. Hi, I'm Clara Rossler, a field reporter for Hofstra Today, and I'm here at the Center for Career Design and Development to interview Michelle A. Grayson on the latest news about the career closet. I'm here with... 
Michelle Grayson. I'm the Assistant Director of Equity, Inclusion, and Campus Partnerships here at the Center for Career Design and Development. Our office have always been in existence, but as far as the career closet, um, the career closet started about four years ago and it was kind of like a one-off event. But this semester is the first semester that we actually have a home for the career closet. One of the goals for the career closet was to just give students um, access to professional clothing and professional attire so that students could feel confident at attending career fairs, mm -hmm. confident in their interviews, and then also just kind of like level the playing field so that people and students just have access to professional wear and suits. I believe we received about maybe 5,000 items over the past four years. Every single day, we're receiving phone calls and getting drop off from like, not just one person, but like three, four, five people are dropping off bags and bags of goodies and, and clothing and accessories. In the beginning of the semester, we had our um, pop-up shop and our kind of ribbon cutting event, just celebrating the fact that we have a permanent location, um, FYI, it's in the um, Campus Living and Wellness Center, and it's right across from Res Life, right next to the um, Pride Pantry. Moving forward, students could just um, schedule an appointment, and basically we're taking appointments only um, for the remainder of the semester. Yeah, that's so amazing, the amount of options you can get here. Yeah, thank you so much, yeah. Thank you. It was so much fun talking to Michelle A. about the career closet. Book an appointment online and make sure to check it out. Back to you in the studio. Don't go anywhere. Your weather forecast with Caitlin Bancroft is coming up right after this. Can I help you? I'd like one ticket to Thursday Night Live, please. Don't you mean Saturday Night Live? No. Thursday Night Live. You know, live from Studio A, it's Thursday night! I think you must be confused. It's live from New York, it's Saturday night! You're telling me you've never heard of TNL classics such as Camp Poke Me Daddy, Kitties on the Street, Robloxia, and frickin' Halloweener? Robloxia? I don't know her. Uh, and that last one you said kinda sounds a little bit dirty. Are you sure you can do that on broadcast TV? Well... Has Saturday Night Live ever won an Emmy? <laughs> We've won 86. So, you want tickets to Saturday Night Live or not? No, but I'll take one to Thursday Night Live. Let's go to Caitlin Bancroft for updates on this week's wicked weather around Hofstra. Good afternoon, Hofstra. The rainy and foggy weather we've been having is perfect for Halloween. Let's take a look at today's weather. We'll have mostly rainy skies with clouds expected in the afternoon. There will be a high of 67 degrees and a low of 60 degrees. There will be a light wind throughout the day. Tomorrow, the sunshine returns with a high of 64 and a low of 48. Now let's take a look at how the rest of the week will play out here in Hempstead. Friday will bring a high of 57 degrees and a low of 44 degrees with sunny skies earlier in the day. Clouds will return later on in the afternoon. Saturday will have mostly sunny skies with some cloud intervals. There will be a high of 57 and a low of 43. Sunday will also have intervals of clouds and sunshine with a high of 61 degrees and a low of 44 degrees. That's all for your five-day weather forecast. Now back to you, Amelia and Max. Thanks for the weather update, Caitlin. Stay tuned for all things Hofstra Entertainment with Bella Laboo right after this. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. You, you, you didn't turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, backpack kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I gotta get it trending, no. honey. Come on. Let's go. Oh, honey, can we talk? 
Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Let's hear from Bella Labou about entertainment at and around Hofstra. The music department presents the American Chamber Ensemble, Exploring the Human Spirit, Part 1. This exciting performance will take place in the Helene Fortunoff Theater in Monroe Lecture Center on Sunday, October 30th at 3 p.m. General admission is $20, $15 for seniors over the age of 65, and $15 for non hofstra students with ID. Tickets can be purchased at the door or reserved ahead of time. The Department and Drama Dance presents the Fall 2022 Faculty Dance Concert. Come to the Tony and Martin Sosnoff Theater at the John Cranford Adams Playhouse. On Thursday, November 17th, Friday, November 18th, and Saturday, November 19th, you can watch the show at 8 p.m. Or you can attend on Saturday, November 19th, and Sunday, November 20th at 2 p.m. Come experience the masterful work of Hofstra faculty choreographers and special guests. Hope to see you there. The Department of Drama and Dance invites you to the 74th Annual Shakespeare Festival. The Shakespeare play Cymbeline, directed by Cindy Rosenthal, will have performances in the Tony and Martin Sosnoff Theater at the John Cranford Adams Playhouse. The shows will be on Fridays, October 28th and November 4th, and Saturdays, October 29th and November 5th at 8 p.m. Additional shows will be held Sundays, October 30th and November 6th at 2 p.m. Attendance is free and open to the public. Our reporter, Nicholas Costanzo, sat down with the director of Cymbeline, Cynthia Rosenthal, to discuss the drama department's upcoming show. Let's take a look. I'm Nick Costanzo, and I'm here with Professor Cindy Rosenthal. It's a pleasure to be here with you. She is the director of Cymbeline, and she's going to tell us more about it. Hi. I'm very excited to be directing Cymbeline for the Department of Drama. This is the very first time the Shakespeare Festival has produced Cymbeline. It's a very long and complicated play. It's also a very beautiful play. It's a lot about the world that we live in now, in my opinion, because it's a play that's set in a time of war. Mm -hmm. So I decided to set it in a more recent period than when it was written, which was Shakespeare's time. One of the things that compels me about this particular play is the journey of the woman at the center. It's a young woman. She happens to be a princess, but a lot of bad stuff happens to her. A lot of stuff happens to her that's really scary. So our cast is about 20, um, and then on top of that we have um, two uh, student, or a student sound designers and lighting. Um, so in total we have probably about 26 students involved with it. The show takes place in three different worlds, um, Italy, Britain, um, and then Wales. Um, and the transition between each place is really cool to me. It's a really good show that if you haven't experienced a lot of Shakespeare or haven't really gotten into a lot of Shakespeare, um, it's a good one to kind of sit down and immerse yourself in it and you really start to get the idea of the writing style, the, the flow of everything, and you see how the different parts of the story come together to make, you know, uh, one massive <laughs> uh, timeline. And if you guys want to check it out, you know exactly where to go. Thank you so much, and we'll be right back to you on Hofstra today. What an amazing interview with Cindy Rosenthal and Cam Sarchi from the Drama and Dance Department, conducted by field reporter Nicholas Costanzo. I will for sure be adding this to my schedule this weekend. Please don't click away. Your Hofstra Sports update is coming up right after this. Each year, there are more than a dozen significant tropical and winter storms that threaten the East Coast. So chances are there will be more hurricanes and blizzards near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Jason Wyke is here with your Pride update. Let's hear how Hofstra Athletics are doing.
CAA playoffs will commence tomorrow as the women's soccer team will face the Monmouth Hawks on the road in West Long Branch, New Jersey. The Hawks are not only newcomers to the CAA, but they are the first seed in the conference with a stellar 6-1-2 record in CAA play. Your Hofstra Pride come into the contest at 3-4-2 in the CAA. The last time these two teams faced off was September 29th in a gritty 1-1 draw. Hofstra comes into this contest looking to defend their CAA championship from last season. Monmouth has other ideas in mind. This will all go down tomorrow at 3. From the pitch to the court, the Hofstra men's tennis team won championships at all three singles flights and the A doubles flight during a dominant showing at the Marist Invitational. The Pride went 16-3 overall in the tournament as Bo Coltarts, Matthew Garcia, Josh Reynolds, and Jonathan Mark Gayu shared the doubles crown after each team advanced to the finals. Coltarts and Garcia shared the A singles title after advancing to the finals, while Reynolds won at B singles. Kaitu Odini picked up the win at C singles. Last, but certainly not least, is the women's volleyball team who continues to make history. They downed the Delaware Blue Hens on Saturday and Sunday to advance to a flawless 12-0. This is the sixth longest winning streak in school history and fifth longest streak in the country. Sitting at 12-0 in the conference, Hofstra's already punched their ticket to the CAA playoffs and remain the top dog in the conference. That's all for Pride Athletics. Back to Max and Amelia. Keep it up, Hofstra Pride. Thank you, Jason, for that update. Now to our field reporter, Ricky Hubert. He attended a puppy therapy session and sat down with faculty and students to hear about the importance of these services at Hofstra. While the dog days of summer are far behind us, pet therapy at Hofstra is alive and well. Today, I spoke to students, pet owners, and yes, dogs, about pet therapy at Hofstra and so much more. So how long have you been involved in pet therapy with Abby? Abby's your dog. Well, Abby's only four, so she hasn't been too long, but I had a dog previously where in about seven years. Oh, wow. So what got you into pet therapy? How did it start? My wife knew about it, and I retired, and I just needed something to do. That's how it always starts, doesn't it? You yep. retire. Yeah. Um, what is the evaluation process like to get a dog it's, into pet therapy? It's a, you go to an evaluation in front of a um, professional and some volunteers, and they rate you and your dog as to would it work, or is your dog too hyper, or is your dog too young, or... Is it too big? Size hasn't got anything to do with it. It's all temperament, basically. And then you take a course, which is six weeks, once a week, uh, for like an hour, hour and a half. Is this Abby's first time at Hofstra? Oh, no. She's been at Hofstra uh, oh, four or five times. Well, I hope to see you again soon doing this, Kenneth, oh, and Abby, that? too. She loves it. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me out of your you busy bet. schedule. You bet. Thank you, Kenneth. You bet. All right, now we're here with? I'm Grace Rhodes. Grace. And what year are you, Grace? Freshman year. Oh, so this is your first time doing, doing the dog's pet therapy here at Hofstra. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is? So how do you like it? It's very familiar because it's also very nice. So my school was in a shooting in 2019, and my school basically built this, like, therapy center across the street so therapy dogs would come all the time so it's very familiar seeing therapy dogs it's also very nice seeing them again all right well that's for us at, at pet therapy here at Hofstra back to you Gabe and Amelia in the studio coming up after the break head anchor Gabe James is putting two communications professors head-to-head -head in a trivia game stay tuned have you ever seen somebody treated unfairly because of the color of their skin? Do you guys know what it means to have white privilege? What is racism and what do you think about it? Talk to young children about what racism is, giving them the language to understand it. They can be disruptors. They can shape and shift culture. We may not always know the answer, but we'll try and help you learn. You don't have to have all the answers, but that doesn't mean we can't start. Head anchor Gabe James is on set with two Lawrence Herbert School of Communication professors as they go head-to-head -head in a trivia game, competing in hostile history, Halloween, and general trivia. Let's see who wins. Welcome to Hofstra Today's very first trivia segment, and I bet you these questions are a doozy. Going head-to-head -head are professors Brian McFadden and Randy Hillebrand. Who would like to introduce themselves first? Please, Randy. I'll be happy to. I'm Randy Hillebrand. Nice to meet you, Gabe. Nice to meet you. 
And I'm also happy to meet you, and I'm Brian McFadden. <laughs> Exciting. So let's talk about the rules. I will ask each question, and once I am done, the first person to steal the pumpkin from the center of the table gets to answer first. If one of you gets it wrong, then it goes to your opponent who gets a chance to steal. If no one gets it correctly, I'll give you the right answer, and we'll move on to our next question. We have three trivia rounds, one round about the communication school, our favorite place, one round on Halloween trivia, of course, and the last round is just general trivia. Finally, for the prize, the winner gets bragging rights. <laughs> Let's get started on our communications round. When was the Lawrence Herbert School of Communications founded? First taker. 1995. And that is correct. Ding, ding, ding. One point for you. <laughs> when did Hasha Today officially join the Heat Network? This is a hard yes. one. Any guesses? Oh. <laughs> Wait, um, okay, so, uh, 2011? That is correct. Okay. How did you know that? I, it's a long story. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and what is the oldest Heat Network show? TNL. That is correct. <laughs> it's not Hofstra Today, but TNL is a great another show. What, who is the Heat Network faculty advisor? Uh, the lovely and talented Dr. Gershon. Exactly. We love Dr. Peter Gershon <laughs> here. Now, this one is a little bit harder, but I think y'all got it. Name one of the two inventors of the camera. Yeah, this uh, is a Lawrence uh, Herbert question. Uh, uh, of the, ca what camera? The camera? The what, uh, camera. Uh, any camera? Yeah, any uh, camera. Edward Moybridge. That is incorrect. Okay. Do you want to take a chance? Um, no, I do okay. not. Okay, <laughs> Louis Lee Prince or Johan Zahn were two of our okay. answers. Moving on, which TV show has won the most en Emmys in history? We have a version of it here at Hofstra today. I think uh, that it's a very popular TV show. Uh, yeah. Saturday Night Live. And you are correct. Okay. And our last yeah. question. Thank you for the help. Communications <laughs> trivia is, what was the first music video played on MTV? Video killed the radio star? That is correct. <laughs> Moving on to our next round. This is Halloween. In what state is the world's longest haunted house? I'm not a fan of haunted houses, and I've never been here, but you might know the answer. That's, those hints are not helpful. Uh, Massachusetts. Incorrect. Okay. Would you like to take a guess? Um, California. I am from California, but unfortunately, <laughs> the answer to this question is Ohio. Moving on to our next question. How many times do you have to say Beetlejuice's name to summon him? Three. That is correct. <laughs> I cannot wait for the day I see Beetlejuice on Broadway. <laughs> what horror film is the, has the famous line, here's Johnny, and where is oh, it from? Um, uh, the one, um, oh my god, uh, Brian, help me out. I can't remember <laughs> the name. The Shining? Psycho. Shy <laughs> yes, the it Shining. is The Shining. The Shining. <laughs> Moving on to our next question. Which holiday has the most consumer sales, Halloween or Christmas? You gotta be Christmas. You are correct. <laughs> Halloween is my favorite though. And what is the most commercially successful horror movie of all time? Ooh. Any takers? I actually have seen this one, which I'm surprised by. I'm usually uh. scared of horror movies, but it's a good one. Friday the 13th? Incorrect. Okay. Do you have a guess? Uh, just Halloween for the sake of saying it. It's going to be it. And uh, that is going to be all of our questions for today. I'd like to announce our winner as being Professor Hillebrand. What? Yay. Congratulations. Boo. <laughs> 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 it was a good couple. <laughs> so, uh, do you have a favorite Halloween tradition that you'd like to quickly share with us before we wrap? Sure, yeah, my daughter's four, so she's really leaning in right now. She uh, has autonomy to dress as a pumpkin, so she's very excited about that. And I love that. How about you? Uh, wearing my Halloween tie. Perfect. And so thank you both for being a part of Hofstra Today's Halloween episode. I'll send it back to Amelia and Max. Thank you all for tuning in to our spooky third episode of Hofstra Today for the semester. Be sure to tune in to our next holiday-themed show and the last show of the semester on November 30th at 1.30 p.m. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and our new TikTok at Hofstra Today for fun video updates. Have a safe and happy Halloween. Until next time, that's all at and around Hofstra Today. <laughs>